This tradition of uh, arrangements within the, the wind literature, it goes back uh, many hundred years. Uh, around the time of uh, when Beethoven was alive, there was this uh, great tradition in Europe within the courts. Every king and emperor and uh, whatever you were, you had your own wind music ensemble, so-called harmonimusik. These ensembles later sort of gradually turned into the military bands around Europe. Um, these ensembles, I mean, when, when you're a king and you have your own orchestra, you would like to hear all your favorite music, of course. Uh, so there's a great tradition of taking all the great opera arias and opera overtures and other great music and translating it to these wind ensembles. So the king, he could hear his favorite music. So this has become a very important part uh, of wind music literature. Um, when I arrange music, I sort of uh, look back on this tradition. Also because I don't think that if you take a piece of music and translate it to, to wind music, it should not um, sound like it's a piece for strings that we are trying to play. It should sound like it's a piece that was supposed to be for winds originally, but uh, unfortunately the composer uh, couldn't make it in time before he died. Um, so that's, that's why we have to help them, of course. Um, and we have done this with, uh, with uh, many works. We have helped a lot of famous composers uh, lately, on this uh, last CD, our Mephisto CD, we have helped such famous composers as Shostakovich and, uh, of course, Liszt. Uh, Liszt himself also helped Niccolo Paganini. There's this tradition of, uh, of uh, taking famous pieces of music and uh, putting them into other settings. Liszt he did this uh, for piano, he took some of Paganini's music. And we have taken this uh, piano music from Liszt and made it into a fabulous wind piece that's uh, very uh, virtuous and it's uh, light and it's uh, very, very interesting to listening to and I'm sure that you would all like to hear this. <laughs>